Hello everybody and welcome to today's lesson on special segments in circles. Today our objective is we will be able to use properties of arcs, chords and tangents of circles. So let's start talking about properties of tangents first. The first property of tangents is that an intersecting tangent and a radius are perpendicular. Let's look at our picture here. We have a tangent and that's touching the circle in one place only and we have a radius that goes from the circle and these two are perpendicular. That means they form a 90 degree angle and that is the same no matter where that tangent touches. Let's look at our favorite website www.mathopenref.com and this picture here. We have a circle with a radius and a tangent and I can move that tangent no matter where I want and you see that that angle remains 90 degrees so these two remain perpendicular no matter where the tangent touches because remember there's a radius going to every single point on that circle and so if at that point there's a tangent the angle is always 90 degrees. So let's see how we can use this in some examples. Determine if AB is tangent to circle C. So what we're really trying to find out is is this angle a right angle and is therefore the triangle, a right triangle. And how do we do this? We use the Pythagorean theorem. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. And the hypotenuse, the side that is across from what's supposed to be our right angle. So 5 squared is equal to 3 squared plus 4 squared. 25 is equal to 9 plus 16. 25 is equal to 25. Check. So we can say yes AB is a tangent segment because AB is perpendicular to BC. And if you realize that what you had here for the side lengths was a Pythagorean triple 3, 4, 5 then you didn't even have to do the work and you could have gone right ahead and said yes this is the right triangle so therefore AB is tangent to circle C. Let's look at our next example and again we are supposed to find out if this is a right angle. Does it measure 90 degrees? Let's use our Pythagorean theorem. Our longest side is 10 so 10 squared is equal to 9 squared plus 3 squared 100 is equal to 81 plus 9. 100 is equal to 90. Well, that's not true. No, AB is not tangent because AB is not perpendicular to BC. We can also use this, of course, when we are told that we have a tangent segment. Given the tangent segment intersecting with the radius and the secant segment shown below, find the radius of the circle. Now we're being told yes this is a right angle and that makes this a right triangle and now we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem again but now we're going to use it to find the side length of our radius. So let's set up our equation. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. As we can see this exterior segment is six units long but we need the length of the entire hypotenuse and the piece that's here on the inside is another radius of course r so our hypotenuse is really 6 plus r units long 6 plus r squared is equal to 9 squared plus r squared now on the left we really have 6 plus r times 6 plus r is equal to 9 squared plus r squared. So we need to foil our parentheses first, outer, inner, last. 
6 times 6 is 36. R times 6 is 6 R. 6 times R is another 6 R. And R times R is R squared. Is equal to 9 squared plus R squared. Now let's combine like terms. 36 plus 12 R plus R squared is equal to 81 plus R squared. Fortunately, we can subtract R squared from both sides and it's gone. So we got 36 plus 12 R is equal to 81. Subtract 36 from both sides. We get, and I'm going to continue up here, we get 12 R is equal to 45. Divide both sides by 12 and R is equal to 3.5. Let's move on to our next property, tangent property 2. Intersecting tangent segments are congruent. And here we have this picture and we're going to use this to prove that that is actually the case. Given RS and RT make right angles with the radii of circle C, what other information can be obtained from this? So let's set up a proof. Remember proofs? Yay! Okay, what is given? We have been given that the angles S and T are 90 degrees. We also know that segment SC is a radius and segment CT is a radius and radii of the same circle are congruent. That means segment SC is congruent to segment CT. Both are radii of circle C. And together with our tangent segments they form two triangles and those two triangles share one side and that is the side RC. So segment RC is congruent to segment RC and that is because of the reflexive property. And now we have a right angle and a leg and therefore we can say triangle RSC is congruent to triangle RTC and that is because of the hypotenuse leg theorem. And now that we have two triangles that are congruent, we can say things about their remaining parts and we can say that the side RS has to be congruent to the side RT because of CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. That means that segment RS is congruent to segment RT and those are two tangents so there you have it the tangent segments are congruent just by way of proof for tangent property 2 and here we have an example solve for x x is part of the length of segment RS and we know that segment RS is congruent and we have two tangents because of the right angles there the tangents are vertical to our radii and therefore segment RS is congruent to segment RT and that means that 3x minus 2 is equal to 7 so add 2 on both sides 3x is equal to 9, divide by 3, and x is equal to 3. There's your answer. Alright, so much for the first part of this tutorial, and now go ahead and watch the second part.